have to figure out how to keep my stomach from growling. I have to figure out how to sit totally still for like three hours at a time at least. Can I go three hours without drinking water or going to the bathroom or without eating? This is the weird life of a nature sound recordist. So for Quiet Parks International, I'm the director of Wilderness Quiet Parks. Under just the Wilderness Quiet Parks program, we're looking at over 200 locations around the world. It's one of those jobs where people are like, huh, I never even thought that that could be a job. I'm kind of like part sound recordist, sound designer, and then other part ecologist. And I study environments and resources. You can think of quiet as actual sound pressure level. Quiet actually as silence, um, a lack of sound. Or a lot of the times when I talk about quiet, I'm talking about a lack of noise pollution. When a soundscape is intact and we have a natural soundscape that's healthy, other parts of the ecosystem are also healthy. Places where there's little noise pollution, there's also little resource extraction. There's no roads. Um, there's not a lot of trash left by people. The few purely natural places that we have left on Earth, soundscape's a huge part of it. And the other huge part of this that we hold equally on the other hand is that like mentally, it's really important that humans get to experience quiet. Those are experiences that stick with us and stick with us for a reason. We evolved in quiet. You know, we need quiet. We don't get a lot of quiet in our lives these days. We know if more people could access quiet, they would live happier and more fulfilled lives because the hardest of life's questions get answered so easily when you're sitting in quiet. We use the data we have to, to see, okay, this could be a quiet place. Or we get a tip from someone who says, hey, this is a quiet place. What we do is we go into a preliminary test. We just send someone to show up with some microphones and some equipment. From there, then we kind of start the more formal process of we reach out to community members, uh, including indigenous people, and try and kind of gather some more information about what they think or feel about a potential quiet parks designation, what questions they have. One of the top priorities we have is working with the local communities in those areas. And especially in the United States, most of those communities are indigenous communities. A lot of our national parks and wilderness areas um, are designated on land that is not ours. It was settled land. So kind of starting from that fact, um, we can then move forward with how to help these communities uh, use that land in the ways that they want and they need to. We don't want to draw a ton of tourism to a community that doesn't want it and doesn't need it. And on the other hand, if we can bring mindful tourism uh, or intentional tourism to these communities in a way that works for them and that they have the power to control, um, that can be a really powerful tool. We record data or collect data from two hours before sunrise to an hour after sunrise. And we look at something called the noise-free interval. So how long do we go in between noise pollution events? So if you have a plane fly over, um, that's a disruption. How long is it between the next noise event? What we like to see is areas have an, uh, a 15 minute noise-free interval or more, or something that's dependably noise-free for 15 minutes. And people are probably like, that doesn't sound like that long. To the human ear, there's nothing going on, but you plug in high sensitivity microphones and, and data collection equipment, and all of a sudden you start to see, oh, there's a freight train 15 miles away creating this like really low hum that we can't really hear. But if you're an owl, you could probably hear that. Probably the quietest place I've been to recently is uh, southern Arizona, near the Mexico border. There's a place called Organ Pipe National Monument. From like 6 p.m. to like 8 a.m., you got nothing. Like so silent you hear your blood flowing through your body. So silent that you like hear your joints moving. Like my knees are so loud right now. One is some of the prairies in northern Montana. I would go hours without hearing any noise pollution. Maybe three or four planes a day, no cars, but it is like a music festival of birds. We hold silence for things that we can't explain because silence holds things that we don't know how to explain with words. And I think that's a really powerful example of, of why quiet's important, why silence is important. The most important things aren't said 
with our mouths. You know, they're things that we listen and we hear.